Hey everyone, thanks as usual for joining me for another Soda Dungeon update video. Uh, this month I want to talk a little bit about SodaScript, which is the current name for our in-game AI scripting language. Uh, teased this on Twitter a little while back, and I brought it up at the end of my last video a little bit, but I wanted to make it the actual focus today. Since the release of Soda Dungeon, probably one of the most requested features has always been the ability to control your heroes um, in their auto-combat state, uh, in terms of like, if you have a healer, you know, when the healer heals and when other characters use certain skills, or just characters wasting uh, MP for attacks when otherwise just a single hit would have sufficed. So at first the idea was to simply introduce a menu with options you could tweak, um, such as like what percentage does the healer actually heal at. Um, but a menu like that really opens the door in terms of what uh, what is possible. And I was kind of afraid of, um, you know, once you put a few options in, is everyone going to start requesting you know, this, you know, uh, to, to change this and to change that. And it was going to become an issue of like, uh, where do we cut it off? How many options do we add? Uh, how do we organize it? How do we make it modular? Um, you know, just a lot of simple stuff like, okay, so you could tweak the percentage for a healer, but like, what if you wanted to tweak the healing percent for a non-healer class? Could you do that? Well, probably, but then, you know, like I said, how many other options for how many other classes um, are we going to put into this giant menu uh, and that we'll have to deal with. So I researched the topic a bit and I, I started to look into the idea of putting an actual scripting engine into the game. And that's what I ended up working on. So the idea is that in a sense, um, you kind of have full control now over any given character class's actions um, when auto combat is on. So before I go any further, I want to stop right here and show you what an actual soda script looks like in the game. Uh, so let me switch over here. Okay. So this is the script that's actually being used right now uh, for enemies in the game. This is how, whenever it's an enemy's turn, they execute this, this list of commands and that's how they determine uh, how to attack you. So you'll see it's, it's fairly straightforward and I highlighted the actual command names in red and the parameters are in black. So first we have a, a function called get random usable skill. So that, um, you know, for the active character that gets one of their uh, active usable skills, I mean, as it just as it says. Um, and so that means it will uh, it, it will only pick skills that you have enough magic points for and or that you can, you know, cast on a given turn. So the enemies start by just getting one of their random skills. And, that, and the name of that skill is put into a variable named called skill one. That, that's why it says skill one there. And so the next line is very similar. We have get random character. Except this time, there's an extra parameter for which team you want to get that character from. So we want to attack someone on the opposing team, so we say get random character, opposing team, and then put the name of that character into a variable called target1. And the reason this is necessary is because if you are using SodaScript to write a healing uh, script, then you may want to get a random character from your own team, or just, you know, th there's, there's any number of reasons you might want to look at one team or the other. So finally, the the line that executes and, and finishes the script, uh, we, we have use skill, um, uh, skill one and targ one. And you'll notice here that each one, these are the names I used above, but they now have a dollar sign on them. And that's, that's my way of saying, use the value of what that variable holds, not literally that text. So because we set a random skill into the skill one variable, uh, we can sort of, uh, I guess, dereference it if you want to call it that by saying dollar sign skill one and then dollar sign targ one for the target that we chose here. And so the result is that we'll actually say, you know, um, the game will say use skill strike, for example, on a, you know, a random character. And so, uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. So this might not look that special. Um, it's, it's kind of just a watered down programming language, but that's kind of the point, um, you know, Obviously, players can't have access to the game's actual programming language. I, I don't know if um, I don't know if C# -sharp even really makes it possible. But beyond that, even if you could program the game in C# -sharp, it's really dangerous because I you couldn't just give players control over the game. I mean, they could do literally anything. Um, but more importantly, this this kind of gives it um, this gives players a very focused set of commands uh, to do attack and skill related specific functions. So I also want to go over uh, the actual, at least um, a little bit, the, the full um, command list that I have for SodaScript so far. And this is uh, very much a work in progress. Um, a lot of stuff will be added to this. 
but this was the sort of like initial spec that I came up with that I wanted to have in the language. So you notice up at the top, um, a lot of these sort of script functions are actually just sort of standard programming stuff. You can create variables, um, you can jump to different spots in the program, you can run a conditional if uh, statement, uh, you can do pretty much all your basic math functions, add, subtract, multiply, divide, etc. And then you actually jump down into the Soda Dungeon specific ones where you can, you know, for example, get a random character, uh, get a stat for a certain character, get someone's HP percent, get a character with the lowest stat, get a character with the highest stat, uh, get a team, the, the team's uh, health percent, get the team's magic percent, um, see how many characters are living, see what turn it is, what battle number it is, um, and then, uh, and then you, there's a function to run uh, to, ch to check if a character c can use a certain skill. So that kind of, uh, you know, like I said, definitely going to add some stuff to this. But that, even with these commands, you can you can start to build some pretty complex stuff. You might notice it's not obvious how to use each command, in particular how many arguments it can take and of what type. So um, a goal of mine is to produce an actual documentation page for SodaScript. Um, I mean, I'm going to have to for, as a reference for people to understand how to use this. Um, so far, I have a script set up that kind of piggybacks off the, uh, the SodaScript interpreter and produces a very basic doc uh, that outlines each command. Um, it tells you how many parameters it takes. It tells you what type they are, and it tells you if, uh, if there's a limit. You know, for example, for uh, a command that uses that you can specify opposing team, you know, uh, the, the documentation will say it only accepts certain values, such as opposing team or own team, uh, just to make it simpler. So this is all great, but I kind of jumped to the completely opposite end of the spectrum. We went from players having literally no control over their characters to um, a, a basically a fully scriptable AI language, um, which is kind of crazy, and that introduces a big issue, which is complexity. So we have to ask ourselves certain questions like, how many people are going to use this? Um, and of the people that actually want to change their team's AI, do, do they even want to like learn this sub-language? Or, or do they really just want um, to toggle options, like I mentioned before? And the short answer is I don't really know. So my plan is to start this scripting language off in a very beta fashion. Um, in fact, the game, uh, when we bring Soda Dungeon 2 out, I really doubt it'll even launch with an in-game editor for SodaScript. So at first you might only be able to, to write soda scripts by literally just opening a, a new text document and typing your commands in and then dro uh, dropping them into a folder um, in, in the game's directory so it can read them in. But I want to, to use this to gauge interest in the feature. So obviously I'm going to have to add more than, um, you know, I can't just expect users to write their own scripts in Notepad and, and copy paste them into the game's directory, especially if you're playing on mobile. That's not really uh, an option depending on your platform. But I want to see how much of a priority this becomes. So, you know, if, if interest in, in SodaScript picks up, um, you know, how far do I need to take it? Do I need to write, can I, can I get away with just an in-game text editor? Do I need sort of like a, 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 an assistant that, that uh, limits the command list and, and the parameters um, to prevent users from making mistakes? Um, do I need to go a step farther and make pre-made templates that you can start with? So if you want to create a script, you kind of just like start from, you know, drag and drop the basic healer script, and then you can, you know, just fill in your own values. Um, or do I actually need to go as far as making that option tweaking menu that I was hoping to avoid in the first place? I don't know. Basically, as neat as this feature feels to me, I can't expect an average casual player to want to jump straight into it and, and learn um, a programming language. So um, we just, we'll have to see how it pans out. So I think that wraps up what I wanted to cover for this month. Um, if you have any additional SodaScript questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll take a look. Um, next month, I'm not 100% sure what the topic will be yet. I've, uh, I've been debating doing a video sort of explaining the reasons why uh, Soda Dungeon 2 has uh, been taking this long to produce. There's, there's a lot of stuff to it. It's kind of hard to get into. Um, but you know we're <clears throat> we're still moving forward at a very good pace. It's just uh, there's a lot of stuff to do. There's just a lot to do. So I definitely have to give that a bit more thought. But either way, I always appreciate you guys uh, checking in for our monthly updates. So uh, I will catch you next time.